leave. We got a bunch more wandering around to do. We've got this thing to collect. This is a sea shanty. Oh man, those these are like these are basically courier quests, uh, co chase courier quests in disguise, except worse. Pretty much, yeah. They are generally not fun at all because the the little sheet runs away from you, and if you don't catch it in time, it disappears. And if you don't follow the exact right path, you will not catch it. Thankfully, that one was pretty easy. But uh, they're they're uh, they're all over the place. You collect them, and you get a prize, which is not relevant for us right now. But uh, sea shanties were basically just songs that sailors sang at sea to pass the, the hours while they worked. Do we have any records of like specific songs? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure all the songs in this game are actually like historically accurate songs. Really? Yeah. I mean, I think the lyrics might have been changed a little bit, but I'm, hmm. I'm pretty sure, like I, I looked into it and I'm almost positive that Running Down to Cuba was an actual Sea Shanty song. Hmm. That's impressive. That's maybe there truly is an animus out there. <laughs> well, I mean, the Assassin's Creed games are nothing if not historically kind of accurate. Yeah. They do like to put in a lot of little details like that. Gets brownie points with the uh, intelligentsia gaming crowd. <laughs> yes. So that guard is not leaving us alone, but as soon as the uh, the yellow circle drains, he will forget that we exist. And we can continue on our day. Stealth isn't very complicated in this game, but it uh, it helps to know how the guards behave. Well, everyone knows in uh, you know uh, Age of Exploration Cuba, no one had short-term memory. Yeah. Also, another detail brought to you by Ubisoft. <laughs> yep. Thanks, Ubisoft. There is another... Oh, well, first of all, there's a treasure chest. and a, <laughs> Well, there was a sea shanty, but I triggered it before I was ready. And uh, now, damn. It's, now it's getting away from me. That's the problem with sea shanties, is that as soon as you get close enough, they begin to run away. So if you're not and prepared to go in the direction that it's going, you'll pretty much lose it. And yep, now it's gone. And, like, missing a shanty is... Like, it's so much more... It, it feels like such such a greater loss than like missing a career or something. It, it does. It's also just much more annoying because they disappear and they don't reappear immediately. Right. You have to like go away and come back for them to to be back and try again, and that just caused endless grief. Mm -hmm. And here is me failing at being sneaky. Is this still the quest that the uh, Templars gave us? Uh, no. This is just me trying to uh, collect a manuscript page and hmm. failing at stealth. I don't know if this would work with uh, modern uh, scholars. <laughs> not not overly. Maybe in New York. Yeah. Well, now we collected all the secrets in Havana. things to do, like collect this triangle. Oh, first I have to climb a tree. It's always a puzzle to climb trees. You gotta f <laughs> you've got to find out how you can actually climb the tree the correct way. How you can get up high enough so that you can actually get to a branch. Stop me if, uh, something's coming up and you don't have time for a tangent but i was wondering like do you uh did you do you <laughs> how many pirate captains could like speak all the necessary languages required in these ports that's a good question actually and probably not something that's well documented yeah i would imagine not very many hmm. they probably spoke the languages that they God, were native to yeah pittance. but one thousand yeah i, I don't actually know that's what a hundred pound at most. 
How's a man supposed to become rich in these times with a miser like Torres running the world? Mm, sounds like the beginnings Have of Marxism. You ever, um, <laughs> you ever worked on a plantation before? You know what I'm thinking? I also just like the fact that Steve Bonnet like is just hanging out in the middle the of this going on about. plantation, just drinking <laughs> at a picnic <laughs> table by himself. Yeah. <laughs> he just, um... <laughs> a ludicrous idea. He, he, he really reminds me Imagine of, uh... Such an advantage over me. Um, <laughs> Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Like, that to the right person, if this was a live-action movie and Ricky Gervais is a little younger, he would definitely be him. <laughs> he would be playing him, for sure. They both have like the kind of like chipmunk thing going on. Yeah. Private. Mentioned that in the first video. Oh, did I? <laughs> <laughs> you also couldn't remember his name and had to look it up again. Right, really? <laughs> yep. Oh my god, at least I'm consistent in my stupidity. Wow. <laughs> um, we can make some filler. You can just replace it. <laughs> replace that whole segment. Oh, look at this guy. Look, he's dead now. It's now awful. He's dead. Well, now we're now we're officially doing a stealth mission. I don't think we've really had one of these yet. Mm. Um, the even though it doesn't look like it should, the the sugar cane counts as a stalking zone. A stalking zone. Yeah. So it counts as being hidden whenever you're in it, even though it's pretty easy to see that there would be someone crouching in the patch of sugar cane. So it makes sneaking through these plantations pretty easy. Yeah. Although somehow I still always manage to get caught by one of the <laughs> lookouts on the top. Yeah, the uh, the optional objective in this mission is to avoid combat, so um, so I'll be doing this as stealthy as I can. Generally, if you keep to this like back area, you can avoid most of the guards. Mm -hmm. It's it's a good idea to eliminate as many guards as you can, just in general. Mm -hmm. Just so that you don't have to deal with them in case they change their patrol or something. Can we also talk for a second about how ripped he must be in order to pull a grown man into a hay truck with yeah. such ease? It's pretty impressive. Maybe people were just lighter back then. Yeah, could be. So this guy's this guy's got the key. Now we could just pickpocket him, but that's just too much work. So instead I whistled while like five feet next to him. <laughs> and I'll just take uh take the key that way. That's a bit easier. So, my method of sneaking is usually just uh, kind of surveying the, the location and uh, marking as many guards as I can, just so that I can keep tabs on them as they walk around. Because mm -hmm. the, the worst thing that can always happen is you are hiding around a corner and some idiot guard just comes wandering around that you didn't expect. You, you do have a radar, but I find myself, I don't really, I don't watch it that much. Mm -hmm. Probably as much as I should. It's hard to tell how, how far is too far, how close is too close. It's true, yeah. If, as long as you stay behind guards, they pretty much can't see you, mm -hmm. even if you're running. And, and like I said, it, it kind of helps knowing how their behavior works. Like, uh, if, if a guard spots you, his uh, little alert circle will turn red, and if it fills up about halfway, it'll flash, and at that point, he will actually, like, get closer and investigate the last position that you were in. So you can use that to kind of lure guards out a little bit, mm -hmm. lure them out from hiding, or from, like, patrol positions and stuff. They've gotten a little smarter, but in getting smarter, they're more likely to die. Yeah, they're... I don't know if they've gotten that much smarter, to be honest. They're uh, they're still pretty stupid. Yeah. But I mean, again, I don't think I would really have it any other way. Because if the guards were super intelligent and hard to sneak around, like they are in 
some other stealth games, it would just be way too frustrating. Yeah. There's just so many in this, these games, too. And yeah, they like, all have, like, hive mentality. This courtyard especially. Like, there's a lot of guards wandering around here. And if this was were any other stealth game, aside from maybe, like, Batman, you know, getting caught here would spell just instant death. Mm -hmm. And I almost get caught by that guy. Ooh. But I managed to, to hide behind this corner here. He's still got to investigate. But that will spell his doom. The guy in the watchtower up there is just freaking me out. <laughs> yep. Those are those are sharpshooters. Ah, so annoying. They are they can see you from pretty big distance. Although I think they might have nerfed it in this campaign or in this mission too, because mm -hmm. normally they can see pretty far. Mm -hmm. Um also when they spot you they make a distinct noise and have a distinct little alert circle mm -hmm. with a crosshair in it. But like when you run away from them to like try to hide, you usually run into other guards. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes they will they'll do the same thing where they'll like actually come and investigate, but sometimes they won't. It's hmm. kind of hit hit or miss. I've seen them do it sometimes and I've seen them just stay at their post no matter what too, so You mean like they'll leave the the towers? Yeah, they'll like climb down really? and investigate where you were. Yeah. Huh. That never happened to me. Well, we're past those guys, and thankfully these guards don't really know how to look up. It's a, a, a error in human, uh, you know, <laughs> error in human. Yeah, our necks only tilt up, like, you know, 20 degrees. Right. It's not enough to look at the sky. No. Although I will give them credit that if you yeah. jump on this roof here, they can see you from there. Hmm. <laughs> but they just assume, oh, it must have been a big crow. <laughs> yeah, uh, Nothing, nothing too fancy. <laughs> Just a big animal. Right. You know, it's a Cuban uh, jump monkey. I didn't kill these people. Or did I? Maybe I killed these people when I was here before. Oh. Never mind. What is your true name, Rogue? It's her. Uh, Captain Pissoff. Be a good pull for pizza. Captain Pissoff, the lesser-known brand of spiced rum. Nothing to do with that. <laughs> but perhaps better, the, the more honest brand. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait now! I delivered your treasures tonight. You did, yes, but you robbed us of Duncan Wallow. I don't know why, but something about that freeze frame on Torres is just weirding me out. Oh, uh, it's, it's very skeletal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, flashback time. Display. Mm. This task okay. is a ruined just, man <laughs> I just, I, I know we're like not dealing with any like modern Abstergo stuff in this in this LP, but <laughs> we're in a flashback with. In a, uh, a yep. VR, <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, sir. And once again, my favorite part about this is that they they explicitly say that they're in London, but outside the windows is just black. <laughs> well, <laughs> it was too hard to to model any sort of buildings or anything. It's just. This black void. Maybe they confused it with uh, a drops of modern rain. London. It. It's it's like it's really bad in that scene because he's explicitly looking out the window, <laughs> and it zooms in and there's nothing there. And I was just yeah. like, is this supposed to be like that? That doesn't seem right. I just I guess I just forgot they were supposed to be in London. I just always assumed they were in like rural Wales or something. <laughs> That's what Wales looks like, I guess. Yeah. So look at how easy they break out of here. Just <laughs> flick. They, they, they didn't even break anything. <laughs> Not really. I think there was a lock on the other end, but yeah, they just kind of popped it right off. 
opening a bottle of c coke or something. Yeah. Now what's your plan, mate? Find the weapon and steal the ship. Bottle of rum. All liquid is yeah. rum in this LP. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That's fair. New rule. House rule. Yeah. Oh. We use our whistle to lure a guard forward. We take care of one, and our, our friend here takes care of the other. Glad his running wasn't picked up by anyone. Yeah. Big pile of gold in the corner. I guess this is the, the treasure fleet, the Spanish flotilla. Mm. Was there a Spanish flotilla, or was there... There like were several. General term? That's, yeah, it's like the general term that they used for the like fleet that sailed between the Caribbean and Europe. Mm. It was generally safer to do that than do like individual ships mm -hmm. because of all the piracy. It was a, the product of that. Mm. And it, it was to protect. Like, Was there always a treasure ship and a flotilla? Um, uh, there was probably several. Mm. I, I don't know how big they actually were, but I imagine they were several ships. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, we'll even see in this, this video there's quite a few ships. Hmm. Well, now we get the, the leather vest. We have our full outfit now. I don't know why they just chose not to give it to us until so this the point. Idea, Free what it's a bit odd. Can, yeah. Find a fast ship, flee it. Well, that'd be too much I to take in at once, you know? True. We gotta kill another guard from around the corner. Or maybe we did that objecting already. Yeah, we must have. There's always room for more. Yeah, I did another one anyway. Yeah. Thankfully, we don't have to stay out of combat for this mission. Oh, that would be awful. So, I just kind of did things a little more carelessly. Ah. Yeah, it's more fun to have a little bit of combat now and then. It is, it changes the pace. Also, since these guys are just the regular, uh, regular uh, guard types, which are called regulars, actually, hmm. um, they're, they're pretty easy to deal with. But they're they're markedly different than like the guards that were guarding the uh, the estate. Uh, no, they're generally just the same. Like mm. any time that you see these guys that just have like the jackets and hats, mm -hmm. those are regulars. That guy is actually um, uh, an agile, I think is what they're called. The ones with the wigs. Favor. They're actually like quick on their feet, like and if you run from them, they can actually space. catch up to you and tackle you. Hmm. They can also block your normal attacks. So you generally have to either like break their defense first or counter kill them. Hmm. I really, really enjoy swinging on the, the ropes from like ship to ship in this game. Yeah, it's like that Spider-Man game that came out with uh, movies. Yeah, it's, it's very satisfying. Oh, there we go. The big guy behind the wheel there is a brute. Those guys are super annoying to deal with. They block your normal attacks. They can't be. They can't be counter killed. Mm. So instead, you have to like break their defense first, and then you can follow it up with a, a quick kill. Come on, lads. Or stab them in the back. If we're to yeah. today, it won't be here. Never mind those Spanish bodies that are laying on top of you. <laughs> they're just. They're not in the way. Off they go. Oh, and watch me move. Like phase through these ropes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Don't even exist. It's an animus thing. Yeah. I, I, I will say that Ubisoft kind of gave themselves a bit of a gold mine with uh, Assassin's Creed because anytime that there's a glitch like that, you can always just write it off as, oh, it, it's the animus. Yeah. It's pretty brilliant. <laughs> I don't I don't buy it, but <laughs> it's it's there. Yeah, the Animus requires always on DRM. There's a yeah. brig nearby just waiting for us <laughs> that's to why, take That's it. why, guys. We didn't make it that way. Yeah. Off we go. I enjoy doing that, too. 
it's it's so fun. But you know, like when you have um, like assassination missions on ships, I find that even though like I'll I'll stick to like the the catwalks and the sails and the um, all the other I don't know the words. So I'm just gonna call it ropery. Um, rigging. Rigging. Yes, <laughs> that was the word I was looking for. There you, go. Um, you still have to get so low to actually target your target. You do, yeah. You just end up getting exposed anyway. It's not too much of an issue on the smaller ships, but it's like yeah. on these kind of ships, yeah. Once you get up to these like higher, higher positions here, yeah, you can't even interact with the guys down there. Yeah. But I'm not really trying to be subtle, so mm -hmm. fight me. I never even knew you could do overhead assassinations with the swords. Yep, you can. A lot of the times it happens just because I often have the sword selected by default. Yeah. Because I, I prefer to use those in combat than the yeah. Assassin's Blade. Just because I'm weird like that. Mm. When combat happens, I like to use actual weapons, not the wrist blades. Because That's the pirate in you talking, not it the is. assassin. It doesn't work for all the assassinations. Like, just your normal ones still use the wrist blades no matter what. Oh, but uh, the like leaping assassinations like that, you can use swords or the wrist blades. Hmm. But I assume it really makes no difference. At that oh point. no, it's same function, yeah. just slightly flashier. I don't know if there's any difference as far as like how stealthy you are. I don't think there is. Because there's no situation in which an aerial assassination isn't a one-hit kill, right? Um. The only time is if the enemy is already alerted to your presence, right. in which it just won't work. He'll just like grab you and throw you off of him. Right. So, and other than that, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's always you always kill the person if you can if you hit him with it. Hmm. All right, we've we've rescued all of our sailors. It's time to get out of here. I don't know how they got up here first. I, I don't know either. They're just so eager to get into that water. <laughs> yep. There they go. Ah, oh, that must have sucked. Oh my god. Alright, so we're gonna steal this brig. First we gotta kill the captain. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Alright, now we'll take care of the rest of the crew. No? Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Off we go. Easy get. All the, the the rest of the Spanish crew, I guess, just disappeared. It's a hard wind coming. The man speaks true. You lot way anger. As for the rest, it's so fascinating how you have like these relatively um, untrained people just like being able to go from like ship to ship and like take it over and you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was that was the nature of this era. There were so yeah. many people around that were like sailors that yeah. were laid off that, you know, they could just jump on a ship and know exactly what they were doing. Yeah. It's insane. It's just like a different breed of person. Like, I drive a car every day, mm. but I couldn't drive a tractor trailer, you know? Like, yeah. if I wanted to steal, like, a bunch of, I don't know, uh, furniture from Ikea, yeah. I couldn't. Yeah, it's, it's pretty weird when you think about it, because, I mean, there's just, there's a lot of people that were trained to do this kind of stuff back then. It was just... It was a way of life. No matter the type of ship, either. Yep. Now we get a rogue wave. I enjoy them. They're really easy to deal with. You just, just take them head on and you'll be fine. They just make it feel so much more uh, like at, at stake. Yeah, they do. If if you don't, if you're not facing forward, you can take a lot of damage from one of them. Um, like there was a bunch of other little ships in the area when that rogue wave hit, and it killed all of them. So I once took one because I figured, you know, if you take a rogue wave directly from the front, you're okay. So I thought I wasn't going to be able to turn in time. So I figured, okay, I'll, I'll just I'll turn the other way so I'm facing away from it, and theoretically it should be fine. 
but it, it wasn't. <laughs> Things did not go very yeah. well after that point. <laughs> I also question, like, this is a lot of uh, water spouts. <laughs> yeah, I kind of <laughs> like, wonder about this too. I don't think this is real. This is like storm of the century right. kind of stuff. And this is like a one, they're like one hit kills, right? No, right. if you if you do get close, it'll kind of suck you in toward it, uh -huh. and you'll just start taking gradual damage. If you're oh. right in the middle, then you're pretty much stuck there, and you'll take a bunch of damage before it moves on. But um, they're not a one-hit kill. If you if you don't have like if you don't have a lot of health on your ship, then it can kill you pretty easily. But uh, they're they're survivable. Oh. Same with rogue waves. You right. can survive them, but it's it's better to just it's much better to actually deal with them appropriately. Makes sense. I'm just looking forward to our first uh, shark hunting mission, or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, the hunting missions. There's actually, one thing I like about this game is that there's actually a really neat physics engine in play for the whole sailing, and uh, I saw a video a little while ago of a ship that somehow got like disconnected from the water and so it was just like this ship that was flying in the air and it just started to like spin out of control and just fly up into the air <laughs> obviously what happens in real life is the same <laughs> yeah yeah but, uh, like that's like a level three upgrade right we're gonna get to that point yeah but i, I think that kind of detail is a neat like that they react there's you can tell that there's some kind of physics in play here for the water and waves, rather than just having something that's glued to the surface of the water all the time. By God, we pulled this one straight from the teeth of Neptune. I'm Edward. Much thanks for your aid back there. I guess maybe it was supposed to be a storm of the century kind of situation. Yeah. I can't recall if... Uh... Spots are that common in all the like uh, mundane storms you encounter throughout the game. I don't think they're that common, but yeah. you do run into them from time to time. There's at yeah. least one that is hilariously stupid, but uh, we'll we'll be dealing with that one at a later time. Man, perfect timing. Yep. Mission complete. Episode Free twenty three pirates kill guards from behind corners. A plus. A thousand doubloons. Yay.